In the previous 3-4 lectures, we discussed BJT amplifier circuit with fixed bias configuration. In this lecture, instead of using fixed bias configuration, we will use voltage divider bias. You can see BJT amplifier circuit on your screen and the circuit inside the rectangle is the voltage divider bias and if you compare voltage divider bias with fixed bias configuration you will find we have two extra resistances in case of voltage divider bias resistance R2 and RE are the extra resistances as we are having the ammeter resistance RE we need capacitor C3 capacitor C3 is the bypass capacitor we are using capacitor C3 to increase the gain by short circuiting the resistance RE now we will calculate the input impedance the output impedance the voltage gain the current gain the overall voltage gain and the overall current gain and to do this we first need the AC equivalent circuit we already know how to obtain the AC equivalent circuit and after that we have to replace the transistor by its RE equivalent model so these are the two things we need to do in order to calculate all these parameters I will directly draw the circuit this is the AC equivalent circuit with RE model of transistor when you compare the same circuit in case of fixed bias configuration you will find in place of resistance RB we have resistance R1 and resistance R2 the ammeter resistance RE is short circuited because in AC equivalent circuit we short circuit all the three capacitors capacitor C1, C2 and C3 will be short circuited because they offer zero reactance zero reactance is offered by all the three capacitors so in place of C3 we have a short circuit like this so resistance RE is short circuited and because of this reason we have not included it in the output side so the output side is exactly same as fixed bias configuration and on the input side we have resistances R1 and R2 in place of base resistance RB now we will use this circuit to find out input impedance the input current the input current is ii this current current through beta plus 1 re is the base current this current is the collector current and the current through load resistance is the output current let's say this terminal is terminal 1 this terminal is terminal 2 this terminal here is 1 prime and this terminal here is 2 prime the input impedance is the impedance seen from terminals 1 and 1 prime so zi is equal to resistance beta plus 1 re resistance beta plus 1 re connected in parallel with r1 parallel r2 let's say let's say resistance r prime is equal to R1 parallel R2 which is equal to R1 R2 divided by R1 plus R2 so beta plus 1 RE is parallel with resistance R prime so input impedance is simply equal to beta plus 1 RE in parallel with R prime and if we want to simplify this equation then we have to consider the fact that beta is a large quantity so beta plus 1 is nearly equal to beta so zi is equal to beta re in parallel with r prime so this is the expression of input impedance now we will find out output impedance zo the output impedance is the impedance seen from terminals 2 and 2 prime and in order to calculate the output impedance we need to open circuit the load this means load resistance RL is equal to infinity so we have to open circuit the load and we need to short circuit the source this means Vs is equal to 0 
and you can see when Vs is equal to zero, the base current IB is also equal to zero. This implies the base current IB is equal to zero amps and when base current is equal to zero amps, the collector current IC which is equal to beta times IB is also equal to zero. So this implies the collector current IC is also equal to zero amps and by modifying the output circuit based on the fact that collector current is equal to zero and the load resistance is equal to infinity we have something like this this resistance here is resistance RO the output resistance and this resistance here is the resistance RC the load resistance is equal to infinity so we have open circuit in place of load resistance and now we can easily calculate the output impedance the output impedance seen from here is equal to RO parallel RC it is equal to resistance RO parallel RC or we can write or we can write ZO is equal to RO multiplied with RC divided by RO plus RC we know the output resistance RO is very large resistance and if if RO is greater than equal to 10 times resistance RC we can neglect resistance RO so ZO is simply equal to RC so this is all for the output impedance now we will calculate we will calculate the voltage gain the voltage gain is represented by a subscript V and it is equal to ratio of output voltage VO to the input voltage VI the output voltage is the voltage between the terminals 2 and 2 prime this is the output voltage and the input voltage is the voltage between terminals 1 and 1 prime this voltage is the input voltage we will first calculate the output voltage then we will calculate the input voltage the output voltage VO is simply equal to minus IO multiplied with the load resistance RL and by using the current divider rule we can write IO equal to equal to IC inside the bracket resistance RO in parallel with resistance RC divided by RO parallel RC plus RL multiplied with resistance RL very simple because total current is equal to IC and we want to calculate the current IO so we will multiply the current IC with the other resistance the other resistance is equal to RO parallel RC so we have multiplied RO parallel RC with the current IC and then we will divide it by RO parallel RC plus the load resistance RL because IO is the current through the load resistance so this is the output current and uh, we can further simplify this by replacing the collector current IC by beta IB so we have minus minus beta IB inside the bracket RO parallel RC divided by RO parallel RC plus RL multiplied with RL and now we will simplify this by using the fact that resistance RO is larger than or equal to 10 times RC and in this case we can easily neglect the resistance RO so we have minus beta IB inside the bracket RC divided by RC plus RL multiplied with RL we have neglected resistance RO if load resistance is much larger than resistance RC then we can neglect RC from the denominator so we have minus beta IB inside the bracket RC divided by RL multiplied with RL 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 will cancel out and we have the output voltage equal to minus beta IB RC 
Now we will calculate the input voltage, the input voltage Vi. If you see the circuit, you will find the input voltage Vi is simply the drop across resistance beta plus 1 Re. The current is equal to Ib, the resistance is beta plus 1 Re. So on multiplying them, we have the drop across the resistance. So Vi is simply equal to current Ib beta plus 1 Re. Now we can easily calculate the voltage gain Vo by Vi. Vo is equal to minus beta Ib RC minus beta Ib RC divided by Vi is equal to Ib beta plus 1 Re. Ib beta plus 1 Re. Ib, Ib will cancel out. So we have minus beta RC divided by beta plus 1 Re and we already know beta is a large quantity so beta plus 1 is nearly equal to beta so beta and beta plus 1 will cancel out and finally we have minus RC divided by Re so this is the expression of voltage gain the expression of current gain the expression of overall current gain and the expression of overall voltage gain is the homework for you there is one very important point that you can see minus RC divided by RE is the voltage gain with voltage divided by us and if you remember the presentation with fixed bias configuration we had the same voltage gain we had the same voltage gain with fixed bias configuration so voltage gain remains same in voltage divided bias and fixed bias configuration and the homework problem the homework problem is calculation of calculation of current gain the second problem is calculation of overall voltage gain and the third problem is calculation of overall current gain so these are the three problems once you have your answer post them in comment section i will end this lecture here see you in the next one